The first piece I'll need for my book is paper. So I'm going to start with the material that is the origin of the name paper, papyrus. Papyrus is a paper-like material made from the pith of the papyrus plant, which was common along the Nile River and in other areas of Africa. Papyrus was first manufactured in Egypt and southern Sudan in 4000 BC. Papyrus became a popular writing material for centuries as it was cheap and fairly easy to produce. However, it was fragile and sensitive to moisture, and dependent on the limited areas where the papyrus plant grew. While the papyrus plant became famous today because of its availability along the Egyptian Nile, it is now nearly extinct there. Today, papyrus is still made in Egypt, but almost purely just for tourist trade. So what I have here are the papyrus plants. The natural resin inside the stock is what gives it its form and holds it all together. So it's a pretty straightforward process and really just need the papyrus plants. So, good cutting. After cutting off the stems, I have to shave off the outer layer, revealing the inner stock. Then I slice it into strips that are soaked in water. Then I roll out as much liquid as possible. Now they're ready to be woven together. Place between two pieces of cloth, they are now pressed together and left to dry under some weights. While my papyrus sets, I'll explore the next writing material in our journey through the evolution of paper, parchment. Parchment is a writing material made from the dead skins of animals, usually sheep. The use of animal skins for writing dates back to as far back as 2500 BC, but didn't reach widespread use until the first century. Parchment ended up replacing papyrus due to its greater resilience to moisture and is wider availability in more northern areas like Europe. Parchment was most popular during the Middle Ages and continued to remain a popular luxury writing material even after the introduction of more inexpensive paper. Previously, when I was making my suit from scratch, I went deer hunting to make leather. Fortunately, I still had some leftover hide that I could use for making parchment. The process for turning hide into parchment starts very similar to what I did before to tan the hide into leather. First, you need to scrape off all the hair. So deers are covered in ticks. Even after they die, they're still still stuck to the hide. Giant one right here. Fortunately, they seem to be dead this time. Then, instead of tanning the hide, I stretch it over a frame and scrape off any remaining flesh and fat and let it dry in the sun. After a few days, additional scraping is done. During this time, the hide is re-wetted and the ties are tightened to help flatten the parchment further. After a few more days of drying, the parchment is finally done. While parchment remained a common writing material for centuries, there's our parchment. It was still a dense, heavy material that was eventually replaced by what we would typically consider modern day paper. I'm gonna cut down a tree. Now I feel like a man. Whew. That was a good workout. <sighs> now what? Oh, the head's coming off. Oh, 
That wasn't too hard. All right, now the hard part, getting into the car. Back home, I removed the bark and used a planer to grind down the log down into small wood shavings. Then I used a blender to grind them down into a paste. Next, I poured the paste into my sink and ran a screen mesh through it a few times until I had a solid sheet. Lastly, I let the resulting piece of paper dry overnight under some weights. After letting everything dry overnight, I now have my completed first batch paper. So first here I have the papyrus, which did not turn out all that great. Uh, because we didn't use mature stocks, we used much smaller ones. It's uh, developed quite a few holes and has not really held together so well. So this isn't really going to work for a book, unfortunately. And then I have the wood pulp paper, which kind of has a similar issue. It uh, has kind of, it's a solid piece, but it's all disintegrating and falling apart and does not hold its form at all. So in the usual traditional paper making process, they use a lot of chemicals and a lot of more advanced machinery than uh, your home blender to break it up and use enzymes to really break it down and bleach to make it more white to get the traditional paper we're used to. So uh, this is about as close as I could get with the materials I had, which it's not very good. But the parchment turned out fairly decent. Traditionally you use sheep skin, which results in a much thinner and uh, a little bit closer to paper uh, material. But because I use a deer skin, because that's what I had available, it's uh, a little bit thicker, so it's not ideal and it's not super clean or white, but it, it makes a fairly adequate writing material. And I think this should work decently in my book. So I had some success with the parchment, but the, the wood pulp and the papyrus were not too great. So I think later on I'm going to try and revisit these and attempt a little bit better. But until then I'm going to learn from some experts about some other ways to make paper in the next episode coming up.